We're talking to a genius this evening, a man who should be winning an Oscar for his performance night in and night out on the stage. Freddie Starr, how are you? Uh, hello, Alex. Everything okay? Yeah, no, not really. I'm in hospital at the moment. I'm, I'm having a blood transfusion. Oh. Yes. <laughs> That's a way to start a conversation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Alex, all right, mate. Is that what they call a comedy cul-de-sac, is it? I don't know. I now don't listen, know. The, the last time I spoke to you, you were in Nottingham, and I saw you last in Nottingham a few years ago, and then you both got off to Spain, and now you're back, are you? Yeah, I've, I've sold up in Spain, and I'm back in England now for good, you know. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I've, I've got uh, Reese and Paige, who stay with me, and um, the, the, one's a, a, a cosmetic surgeon, uh, uh, we call him Doctor Doctor Reese. Yes, and uh, Paige is a uh, she. She's a nutcase, and she's only um, ten. And she does ballet dancing in front of me and everything like that, and embarrasses me. Are these your offspring then? Um, no, no, no. They're not mine, uh, but the the my wife's from a uh, uh, tenth marriage. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was more than ten, actually. I'm disappointed. Oh, no. I've, 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 God, the, I'm a shepherd. <laughs> We're kids as a concern, I think. <laughs> no, no, my wife's expecting a baby in uh, August. Um, um, oh, you've uh, never got her up the duff again. Uh, it, no, it, 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 this is the first time she's been pregnant. Oh, this oh, one's first time, is it? Yeah, to me, yeah. Right. You know, I, I've got to talk to you about these things. Well, they were... She said it's mine. <laughs> well, we'll talk about your age in a moment, but we, we've spoken about this before. There's these things now called condoms, Freddie. Have you not heard of them? Yeah, I live in one. <laughs> um, they're quite comfortable, actually. Are they? You get them in large size, extra large size. You, you go to Millet. <laughs> and you... You could get these big condoms, you know, with, it, it, there's a stove in it, um, your fridge, you know, a big American fridge. Yeah, and, 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 and you keep them anywhere, do you, in the house? Because apparently they're selling them in Tesco's now, you know, with a yeah, fill-by date. Yeah, but yeah, but they're not so portable ones. This is a big portable one. It goes oh. on the back of a caravan. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like a windsock and hurricane. It's like the Millennium Dome, is it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> How's the tour going? Are people laughing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always a relief for a comedian, that, isn't it? Oh, well, we have, yeah, yeah, yes. It, 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 it's a big, especially when you haven't worked for a year, you know, you come back and you haven't worked and you get on stage and you feel really nervous. I mean, talk about PMTs, you know, you know, put men through it. <laughs> it, it, it it's like, um, isn't Sherry Blair ugly? Is she an ugly person? I think she's got what you call a walk-in mouth. A walk-in? A walk-in mouth. You've heard of a walk-in shower? Yeah. That's a walk-in mouth. Do you think she's got furniture that, in her mouth and that? I don't know. Like a three-piece suite <laughs> and a plasma telly. You have to worry when the Prime, the Prime Minister of this country saw her across a bar one evening and thought, my God, she's gorgeous. I mean, it does worry you a bit, doesn't it? Oh, he must have been drunk, Tony. <laughs> Poor Tony. <laughs> What I love about you, sorry. I tell you what I love about you, Freddie, and, and I, I first realised it when I saw you live, and then I saw those audience widths, which I just thought were brilliant, is your versatility and the fact that you can do the comedy and do all that nonsense, but you can also sing like a bird, and the Elvis stuff you do, I just think is brilliant. Is that is that still in the act? Yeah, thank you very much indeed, sir. Yes, it is. <laughs> I've changed my name, actually. Have you? <laughs> what, like the last caller? Yeah, well, no, don't, no, don't mock him. I mean, there's a lot of Elvis Adam Presley's out there, you know? <laughs> you know, especially from China. You know, they like to sort of um, change their name from Wong Wong Wu to Elvis Adam Presley, which I think <laughs> it's a good thing, actually, you know, especially if you get you know, put on your license. Do you ever see yeah. those uh, backing singers for Elvis that you sang with on your audience with? Um, the, the, the Jordanaires? Yes. Yeah. Uh, w one of them died, of, I think, about six months ago. Mm. You know? uh, well, they are about 103, aren't no, they? Not the one with the deep voice. He was the best. Oh, no, 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 not him. No, not Bob, no. Oh, good, cool. that's a relief. Can I ask you a question about him, or with when he sang those bass notes? But really, how did you manage to fit his package in that studio? Because it must have been enormous. His what? His, his, his package, you know, to get those low notes. 
it's package. Um, <laughs> let me think, yeah. This is family radio, you see. I'm cleaning it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, um, is it? He's got quite a good package, actually. Oh, good. And uh, uh, when he sang, you know, I thought, what a good package, you know, you've got. Back up and down the uh, country gigging and gagging. Where are you going next, Freddie? I'm going to, uh, next date is Blackpool. I think it's uh, the day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then the, the day after that, I'm in Liverpool, my hometown. How does the uh, comedy change where you go, or do you just do the same thing wherever? No, it, it was different last night. I was taking the mickey out of out of Derek Akora, you know, from Most Haunted. <laughs> yes. You know, the Scouse fella. Mm. I talk like that, like, you know. <laughs> I see uh, the spirit, and he's coming down now. He's a bad one. He's a bad one. <laughs> and so uh, I was doing that last night, and it was, it was just, I kept, kept going for about half an hour on him, you know. You don't believe any of that nonsense, do you? Um, well, he phoned me up and told me when I was going to die. <laughs> you know and I can't tell you what I said because we're on live radio you know <laughs> but, you, but you can imagine from me can't you well have you changed your act at all because I mean it started when you were doing lots of TV and I remember you first in the in the 80s doing all that kind of nice early evening ITV stuff and then your live I show it. I hated it right I hated it. it I was on at half past seven on a Saturday night and they were trying to make me into Benny Hill you know and I, I just hated every minute of it I used to see you filming sometimes because I lived up in Nottingham that's where I'm from and you'd be filming all over Nottingham for weeks on end and it looked yeah. like a laborious task really because as you say they got you to do silly kind of stuff didn't they and uh, were you always this kind of hard comedian in the sense that you weren't doing nice silly Benny Hill kind of falling over on stage you were doing kind of knob gags yeah it was like they were trying to um, the material that they were giving me uh, the writers you know it, it was terrible and uh, uh, so the only show that I've written is The Audience With you know mm. and I wrote that with uh, Nigel Lifko who now lives in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and um, he's Mr. Pop Idol isn't he? <laughs> yeah Mr. Pop Idol yeah what I loved about that audience with was that you uh, got Vanessa Feltz down. I can't stand that big fat pig. Ah, oh. she's awful, hypocrite. You're being too kind. <laughs> I really am. I mean, this is a woman who spent ten years on TV going, "Being fat is marvelous." The minute her husband divorces her, she ends up losing twenty stone, and she's still obese. She's ugly. <laughs> Isn't she ugly? <laughs> she's like a blow-up doll, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you want to get a pin and let her down. That's the yeah, thing. I, I wouldn't even lend her one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let alone give her one. Uh, oh, God. Well, listen, it's great talking to you, Freddie. Good luck with the tour. And I know you're doing summer season as well. Where are you going? Um, I'm going to uh, all over the place. We're doing uh, Great Yarmouth and down south. At, uh, uh, I think it's Bournemouth somewhere. And uh, just just all over the place really have you got a favourite gag at the moment that you could tell us that's clean I can't tell it on, on the air no oh alright <laughs> can you tell us the setup and we'll leave the punchline to people's imagination would that work or is it still too crude well <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't tell you this gag it's uh, it, alright then um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you my favourite gag at the moment. I was watching uh, Countdown today with Carol Vorderman and I got aroused. Nice Four. fella. Seven letters it was. Seven letters? Yeah, I got aroused. Leave it, don't worry about it. I, uh, okay then. I've got that one and I'm doing that right at this very moment while you're talking to me because you've got such a sexy voice. <laughs> Listen, get off. Oh, by the way, before we go, do yeah. you have any comment to make about this that you made the last time you were on? This is Freddie Star. And you're listening to Alex uh, Bentfield. Um, I think he should change his name. That's not his real name. I've christened him Rocky Storm. So, ladies and gentlemen, if ever you phone him up or write him letters, address it to Rocky Storm. He deserves that name. Would you like to apologise? I do apologise profusely from the bottom of my bottom. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was this. There was these two old ladies go down to London for a holiday. You know, they they come from you know just outside Liverpool, mm -hmm. and 
so they go into this sex shop in in um, Soho. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she says, "Yeah, hey, I want something to tear my husband on." And he said, "How old are you?" She said, "I'm eighty. And how old your husband? She said, "He's eighty as well." So, so he says, "Well, look, these these knickers here, the crutchless knickers, and if you put them on for him, he'll." <laughs> Look at the time. It's 18 minutes to 11, Freddie, and I think we've got to go. Yes, we have now. Thank you. C can I say goodbye to Reese? Yes, of course you can. <laughs> and Merry Christmas to you, and uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on. Okay, Mr. Storm. And I'll, uh, so much indeed. I'll, I'll, I'll think what the punchline could be and uh, come back to you with it. All right.